Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are continuing to discuss the concepts behind the capital allocation line or the capital market line, and today we're doing an easier, more numerical optimization inspired twist on it that would also allow us to derive a capital allocation line with allocation constraints. For example, if you're not allowed to short sell in any assets or when you have got a more stringent um, allocation constraints still. To illustrate that, as usual, we've got 10 years worth of daily data for 10 well-established American stocks and the S&P 500 index. So first thing to do would be to calculate their daily returns, dividing prices today by prices yesterday, subtracting one, dragging it all the way across for all 10 stocks plus the index and enforcing it throughout the sample. Then to calculate CAPM expected returns, we calculate individual stocks slopes, and then we uh, regress them against the benchmark, so S&P 500. And we'll need to lock that because the benchmark stays the same for all 10 stocks. We can see that uh, betas show the market risk exposures of stocks and play a central role in uh, expected return calculations for CAPM. We need to assume a level of a risk-free rate, and as of October end 2022, it is 4.05%. For the market return, we can simply divide the index value at the very end by the index value at the very start, raise it to the power of 1 over 10, as we've got 10 years worth of data, and subtract 1, getting a reasonable figure of 10.61%. And for the expected return, we add, on top of the risk-free rate, individual stocks betas times the market risk premium, which is market return, minus the risk-free rate. And that allows us to drag it across and calculate it for all 10 stocks and for the covariance matrix we'll use the index method so we'll calculate it using the covariance.s function using the index function applying it to the first row of stock returns locking it throughout then we refer to the first indexing variable um, in column y here so y10 locking the column and then we refer to the final row of data over here and again, select all 10 stock returns, lock them both ways, and select this indexing variable in the Y column. And then doing the same procedure, to select our second stock, which would lead us just to change the indexing variable here. And finally, to annualize covariance, we multiply by 252, as we've got daily data and we want to annualize it. Now we drag it around and down, and that allows us to construct portfolios and calculate their risks and returns. So we'll start with an equally weighted portfolio that has 10% in each of our 10 stocks. We can double check that the sum of weights is indeed 100%. That will be handy in our numerical optimization later. And we can calculate risk and return by using the sum product function for the returns. Again, uh, calculating the weighted average of returns using our weights and expected returns. And for the risk, we can matrix multiply our weights onto the covariance matrix. Then we need to matrix multiply it yet again on the right by the transposed weights. And finally, take a square root to get the volatility instead of the variance. That uh, gives us an equally weighted portfolio with 10.35% return and 17.98% risk. But what we seek to establish is the tangency portfolio here and to calculate the slope of our capital market line. So we want the slope to be the highest possible, as we would like the highest risk premium, the highest attainable sharp ratio for our tangency portfolio, but we would like this portfolio to also be feasible, which means that we do not want to venture beyond the feasible set. We don't want to pick too high of a point that would not be attainable. And for that, for the tangency return on the uh, efficient portfolio frontier, we just refer to the return of the portfolio we just calculated. 
and for the uh, tangent to return of the capital market line we can add to the risk free rate the slope that will seek to vary to maximize it times the um, risk of our tangent portfolio which is over here and we see that if the slope is zero which is um, implicitly assumed here our um, capital market line tangency return would be way lower than the efficient portfolio frontier tangency return and we would like those to be as close as possible without the capital market line exceeding the frontier that would make this line unfeasible but we also want the slope to be the highest possible and here we can also uh, apply the allocation constraints so for the uh, no short selling example we have 100% maximum allocation and 0% minimum allocation we'll seek to vary them later on and finally we can specify our solver task so in the solver task we can select our slope and maximize it by changing our portfolio weights as well as the slope itself and the constraints we need to add are that the sum of weights is equal to one also we need to make sure that our allocations are less than or equal to the maximum allocation over here and that our allocations are also greater than or equal to the minimum allocation over here and finally we need to make sure that the tangency return of the efficient portfolio frontier is greater than or equal to the tangency return of the capital market line this makes sure that our tangency portfolio and our capital market line are feasible and we can untick this box because we might want some of our parameters to be negative especially if the allocation limits allow so and we can stick with gradient descent and click solve and that constructs our tangency portfolio at the blink of an eye with the return of 10.47 percent and risk of 18.02 percent and we can see that these two uh, figures the tangency return of the efficiency portfolio frontier and the capital market line do match and our slope is 0 0.3564 meaning that the highest sharp ratio obtainable uh, in this investable universe with given allocation constraints is 0 0.3564 and that would be the slope of your capital market line that you can use in further applications and we can see that this portfolio actually does conform to all of our constraints no short selling is here but if we would like to enforce some stricter constraints for example if we would like no uh, stock to be um, invested in more than 15 percent and the minimum allocation to be five percent we can uh, run our optimizer again and see how much does it change we see that in this scenario uh, our slope is slightly lower and the return of the tangency portfolio has also reduced by one basis point but this reduction has not been material so while the allocation constraints do reduce our feasible set quite mechanically and reduce the returns of the optimal portfolios as well as reduce the slopes of the capital market line in this particular case this uh, reduction is not necessarily very material and this all there is for the construction of the capital market line with short selling constraints or any allocation constraints whatsoever using excel solver Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any first suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it supports us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.